One of the big problems with project bikes frequently is the wiring and it scares people a lot and it used to scare me but uh, over the years when you've done a few puzzles you actually come to quite enjoy playing about with the wiring. Uh, this time this bike didn't come with a lot of the wiring and some of the bits like the uh, handlebar switches one's not working one's totally wrong so you know I've got quite a bit to look at. What I've done is I've actually bought some wiring from a KRF series CB750 that is a set that's just been taken off a working bike from her breakers. Uh, it's still mucky, it's still, but everything I believe works. They thought everything worked on it. So, what I'm going to do um, this time is I'm going to clean up the wiring that I've got. Um, frequently, you know, it comes and it's absolutely fine unless it's perished and the, uh, the plastics are started cracking. The main problem usually is corrosion on the uh, connectors. Now I've got a really good way of dealing with this, it's not anything I've invented, I got it from the internet and it's using white vinegar and salt and baking powder. And then after that I'm going to give the wiring a good scrub in the sink in some hot water and some uh, degreaser. And when I say degreaser I'm talking about the degreaser for your cooking, not for, you know, not for bikes and then let it all dry. So that's what I'm going to do this time and then hopefully I'll get on to putting the wiring back together. Um, it should be an interesting thing to watch, you know, at the kitchen sink. Everything turned up in a box, jumbled together, but this is basically, it's the battery box. And yeah, it's not the right one I think for this year. It should have two holes here, but I'm sure that bit of a drill and a, a bolt through and we'll be fine. They match up completely. Battery would sit in there. And it comes with the solenoid and the uh, positive wire for the battery. It's got the regulator. This is uh, what keeps it I think within the you know 13 volts or thereabouts for charging the battery. The rectifier. This stops it from being AC and turns it into DC. We've got a fuse box, we've got connectors and the bits to go on that. I'm not quite sure what that is, um, it might be a free part that I never get to use. So overall, oh, and the uh, Winker relay that sits in there. So it all needs taken apart, a good clean, I'll probably do a bit of testing on it. I might not because, you know, they said it was working and usually breakers aren't that dishonest. Yeah, sometimes though if something's been on the shelf for a few years they forget. Uh, give it a good clean, take it apart, put it back together, paint the battery box. That should be a good start for that. That's all that taken apart, ready for uh, cleaning, checking, repainting. Interesting thing I noticed was the rubber things seem actually quite in good nick. And usually these are turned to some kind of fossil and really hard and you have to give them some treatment to make them work again. So that's quite good news that and every bit of rubber that I've touched including the uh, the battery protectors in here all seems really in good nick so this should clean up really well now i was told that this particular loom was off a bike with a fairing and uh, panniers so we know that there's going to be some interesting bits and i think that some of the longer bits of wire there are just the modifications that were on it looking at this end this is definitely the end that goes near to the battery box. You can see some of the connectors that definitely connect to some of the things that uh, are just dismantled. That rubber covered thing will be for the rear lights and the indicators. So the plastic coverings all needs replacing but the wire that's poking through looks like new. 
Um, had a bit of a modification there. Not quite sure what for. I suspect this is the bit where the horn and the ignition all come off. Going up to this end, which is always probably the most complicated. This looks like it's going to be for the headlight, rev counter, speedo, indicators, you name it. And I'm not quite sure how long this bloody fairing was, but bloody hell. <laughs> You've got to be impressed with how long those wires are. The green, they'll come in handy, I'm sure. I laid things out so I don't lose the bolts and it's always a good idea to bag them. I'm imagining this might be something to do with breathers or something, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, no doubt I'll find out when I look at the parts list for this kind of thing. Mm, just wanted to check and yeah, the holes line up close enough at the front. As you can see the single mount at the back, probably need to drill a new hole through. That's not going to be a problem. Plenty of room. Enough room on that side as well for the uh, all of the like, regulator rectifier, that kind of thing. So, it's worth my while cleaning and painting this. I'll just give the, the wiring a tidy up and take off any bits of loose tape and things before I actually start to clean them. So, just crack on with that and then I'll start looking at actually cleaning all the connectors with, white, uh, with vinegar. Not really a lot to say about stripping the tape off a loom. It can be quite sticky. I try and leave the uh, actual tails so that there's something round them so I keep it all in one place. But remember anything that's wrapped up might hold water when you're washing it so don't leave too much on. Now this bit is actually <coughs> folded over it and then covered with black tape. And I just need to remember whereabouts that goes because I will reuse it. Yeah, it's obviously to safeguard it from heat or something like that where it goes over the top of the engine. the terminals it's quite simple really you dip them into vinegar white vinegar and salt a mixture you put the vinegar in and you make sure you put enough salt in till it stops dissolving leave it in there for about two or three minutes it actually takes all the corrosion off doesn't damage the plastic or anything then you dip it into the baking soda just for you know a quick swish around really to neutralize the acids otherwise once it dries it'll start corroding again and obviously, give it all a swirl, dry it off, and Bob's your uncle. All you do is dip the wires, plastic, all the coverings, straight into the vinegar and salt. Leave it 5 or 10 minutes, give it a shake now and again. Pull it out. As you can see, it's got rid of the corrosion. You'll still have to wash any dirt off. And then into the baking soda to neutralise it. Obviously, if you weren't going to wash it afterwards, you'd need to rinse the baking soda off. I just leave that. All the big plug connectors, all of them can go in as well. It's really a good idea, this, for cleaning off your electrical connectors. Uh, I was very impressed when I found this as a technique. counterintuitive to put all your electrical wiring into a sink and fill it full of water and soapy water but this is the best way to get all the muck off give it a really good soak some people have said leave it in for a day or two and there's lots of different advice on the different kind of mixtures you can put in with it I just use a standard washing up liquid and a, a toothbrush give it a good rinse afterwards and then make sure you dry it really well. The right hand switch I replace completely with a pattern part. At least it's got the start button now. I 
I used electrical contact cleaner to get all the gunge off the, uh, the different parts, um, such as the regulator and rectifier. Give it a good spray and a good brush. It evaporates, so it's, uh, it doesn't leave any residue afterwards. So it was worth doing. I took the other switch gear off and checked it through. It seemed to work okay, so I just put it back on afterwards. I also put some rust proofing on the uh, battery box before I painted it. I've rewrapped it entirely now. And that's uh, come together quite well. Well, it's been a fairly long day, but I think it's been quite successful actually. I've completely cleaned the loom. I've uh, taken all the corrosion off the fixings, gave it a really good wash, um, made sure it was really nice and dry, had it on the radiator, you know, might cost a few pennies but it's worth it. Uh, and then I've re-wrapped it, I've been having a look at uh, the connectors and such like, obviously the ones that are for the regulator rectifier power, they're going to be right because they came with it, but some things like the switch gear, the wiring on the switch gear isn't completely in sync with the loom. That is the indicator switch and that's the one from the switch gear and as you can see that won't quite match up but I mean these are things I can fix that's not a problem. The switch gear for the other side which is the new one that works a treat absolutely just plug and play um, I'm very pleased with how that's come together. Uh, I've got to paint the battery box, then I can put all the components back on and start actually fitting them onto the bike. I've got a new battery, um, so it's looking this is looking good. This uh, I think I'll call it a do for today. Um, I'll put this to one side. I'll let the rust proofing on the battery bo bo battery box dry. Then I can give it a, a nice coat of satin black so it'll look beautiful in there. Thanks for watching and well hope you know, hope you found some interest in what I've done.